You got rocks in your water? Boy, I sure do. Out here in northeastern Wyoming, we have what's basically, it's uh, calcium. And what gives it this red color is the iron that's in the water out here. I have an on-demand hot water heater, and so it doesn't have a tank. If you have one that has a tank in it, this stuff will fall to the bottom of your tank and eventually plug it up or to calcify over the heating elements. And then you got a real problem, it burns out, clogs up your hot water heater. It creates a problem for me because in a tankless, it shells out, descales off of the, the heating element, which looks like a big radiator and it's gas fired. Then it clogs up all of my uh, valves and shower heads. So what I've done in the past, and this is what I'm going to share with you here now, is a way to combat that is by putting in a sediment trap. And there are some actual sediment traps for hot water systems, but they're terribly expensive. What you can do is go down to Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, whatever, find yourself an in-house filter head. Now I installed this one, but we had a problem with it. You may or may not be able to see this on the video, but what you need to look for is make sure that your hole here in the middle this one here goes all the way through straight through and then connects to one of these ports without any kind of obstruction. What was in here, and I've actually taken a drill and drilled this out, was there was a, a little section that was perforated. And what was happening is on the inlet side right here, it was allowing that lime scale to pack up in there and it shut it off. So this stuff, it will not dissolve unless you run like CLR or vinegar, straight vinegar through your lines and even then it takes some time to actually break it down. So what I ended up doing is taking a drill, drilling out the center and then drilling out one of the sides here and that got me by for a while but what it was doing was bypassing and still allowing this irritating stuff to end up in my shower heads and all. Even without a filter in here I used it solely as like a sedimentary sediment trap or a, uh, a catch basin. So <clears throat> I've now gone and found uh, a filter head, this GE that I got from Home Depot the other day. I don't know if you can see this, but that port is unobstructed on the way in and unobstructed all the way into here. So then once it goes through its sediment trap and goes through here and starts to go back up, your water is also uninhibited, no Gore-Tex or any other film or screens in there to send it right back out. So. That being said, this guy's going in today. Should solve my problem. This is just a regular old sediment filter. And you get these, drop them inside, and then the whole shooting match goes together. Hang it downstream from your hot water heater. So your hot water heater's over here. Run it in here. It'll actually drop it in. Your sediment collects in the bottom. Clean water goes back out the top. And then judge or gauge yourself. If you need to put a gauge over here to see how much your water pressure is dropping, all done. So if your water pressure drops a little bit, clean out your sediment filter. But this will keep it from going into the harmful places like your ball valves and your uh, little needle valves where your shutoffs are behind your toilet and back of your tub, your kitchen sink, etc. So like I said, a $30 fix versus what they want to sell you as a hot water heater filter for like 60 or 70 bucks and like I said I've been running for a while even without a filter in here so it just basically makes the old-fashioned catch basin this stuff's kind of heavy so it all falls to the bottom and it basically it's a calcium calcium rock is what it basically boils down to it's gritty and it packs up so quick fix okay all installed and fixed one thing that you want to look out for, and I didn't mention this a few minutes ago, is whenever you're doing this, stay away from galvanized fittings. This is an actual hot water heater uh, connection line. So is this one here. This is also the copper version. But if you're getting into galvanized, galvanized has a lot of nickel and lead in it. It's fine in other applications, but not in a drinking water or a potable water source. So you want to stick with brass. So the fittings going in and out of this housing are brass. They also have the plastic seals to connect to these water heater lines. So if you're putting in one of these water heaters in a really area that has, as we call, scaly water or hard water, you want to make sure you put in some clean out ports. That's what these are right here. So that then you can flush the actual water heater itself. 
It's a good idea to put in on any water heater, but particularly on these tankless ones. So, just a little tidbit to help you on your way. Hope this helped you. And uh, that's life on the ranch. So, catch you on the next video. Bye.